what's up guys my name is Zach and this week I've been driving the 2022 Hyundai Kona electric up front is a single electric motor paired to a single speed automatic transmission now I am super excited to be making this video today because I've had a fair amount of experience here with the Kona electric I have tons of thoughts and I am currently driving this car in Illinois in which this car is actually not sold in. So we'll talk about all of that goodiness throughout this video. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers and other merchandise when it becomes available. You could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form and you get a video of your car just like this one. And you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that all electric drivetrain. So so there is the normal Hyundai Kona, which is normally powered by like a 1.6 liter, or even there's the Kona N, which is powered by a turbo two liter. But in some select markets here in the United States, you can find this, the Hyundai Kona electric. It makes 201 horsepower to the front wheels powered through that one speed automatic and range varies online. You'll find about 250 miles. So just for your peace of mind, trying to calculate, trying to figure out 200 miles is about the real world range, especially here in Chicago, as it's been a little bit colder. The temperature has been flirting with freezing for the last week. So that does factor in, but 200 miles is pretty solid. That being said with charge Charging. It does allow for quick charger level three charging. I did charge one time at a dealership while I was filming, but I charged twice at Electrify America that is local to me. And so here are those two receipts from the time I spent on the chargers in case you're curious and you can work out your own answers from there. The charging process is easy, although it does take a little while. Spent a lot of time looking at Matchbox cars at the store or just sitting in the car and watching Ted Lasso with my girlfriend on an iPad. If you are going to buy this, please, please, please have a level two or better charger installed at your home. It's going to make life a lot, lot easier. And throughout all of this, I've been averaging 3.0 miles per kilowatt hour. Is that good or bad? I actually have no idea. This is my first time having a long-term electric loaner. So I don't know if that's a good number or bad, but it's three miles per kilowatt hour. So how does it feel to actually drive the Hyundai Kona EV? Well, it has three different modes, eco, normal, and sport. Normal's fine, but eco and sport could not make the car feel any more different. Eco makes the car feel really mushy, laggy, and slow. But when you put it into sport mode, this thing turns into a rocket ship unlike any Kona I've driven before. Now, I haven't driven the N, to be fair, but this thing is quick. And that has been a lot of fun to play with. And speaking of that driving feel, this is what it sounds like at highway speeds. This is just the GoPro microphone. But in case you're curious of how loud the noise is. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a completely digital gauge cluster. Off to the left is my speed. Off to the right is my charge and power gauge. Along with down at the bottom of that gauge, those are the levels of regenerative braking. So you can turn that up or down. I've been trying to drive one pedal this last week and so far so good. I also do get some information in the center that I can cycle through that you're seeing now. It's not the craziest of graphics or information. However, I like that at least Hyundai sprinkled that in. One thing I do really like is that when you do switch drive modes, it changes your range estimation in the gauge cluster. I haven't noticed this on other EVs before, and I really, really like that. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my voice commands mode, volume, skip track, which is actually down for next track and up for previous track, which is flipped from every other car that I've reviewed. Then I have my phone button and favorites. And off to the right, I have my cruise control options as well as my selectors for that gauge cluster screen. And I do have steering assist. So you can turn this on and the car will help you steer and keep yourself inside the lane. It seems to do a pretty good job. The overall feel of steering wheel is fine, it, you know, yeah, fine. 
And off to the left, I have a giant climate control vent, gauge dimmer switch, parking sensors on and off, plug button, and my traction control on and off. Moving out of the door, I do have my power mirror switches, which look like a Roku remote in my mind, power locks, and power windows. Moving into the center, I do get a pretty nice infotainment system. It is touchscreen. It is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatible. However, it is wired. There is no wireless CarPlay, unfortunately, and we'll talk about why that's a little bit of a downside in a second. But I do also have the standard Hyundai infotainment. I don't mind it. It works. I do have Sounds of Nature, which I've always found kind of funny in Hyundai products. These are basically like white noise machines built in. And I do have Quiet Mode, which will turn the volume down and limit it to 10, as well as only use the speakers around the driver. So if someone is sleeping or trying to sleep in your car, you won't wake them. Here's what the backup camera looks like. It's not amazing. It's not terrible. I don't mind it it works. This does also come with the Harman Kardon sound system, which is a nice upgrade over the standard sound system. However, it doesn't quite knock my socks off. It's a definitely a lot better than the stock system. Then down below the screen, we do have some buttons. So volume off to left, scroll off to the far right. And then of course my radio and media and menu buttons down below that. Then we have two climate control vents and the hazard switch. And then the climate controls themselves. No dual zone climate, which I think is a big misstep from Hyundai. I really, really would have liked to have seen dual zone, especially at this price point of nearly $44,000. I would have liked dual zone. However, the climate controls actually work really well. They heat up the cabin pretty quick and I don't have any complaints beyond that. Then we do have an openable cubby with the wireless charger. Again, this is why no wireless CarPlay kind of bugs me because I've never used this wireless charger because my phone's always plugged in to run Apple CarPlay. So it's there, but I'll never use it. Then we have the center console off to the left is the shifter. It's a push button shifter, which for EVs is pretty standard. Power parking brake down below that. And then off to the right, we do have cup holders. So we will do a big frame bottle test here in the Hyundai Kona EV. And unfortunately it fails. I didn't really expect a car of this size and segment to pass, but alas, it does not pass the big freaking bottle test. <laughs> Then we do have a row of buttons down below. So we have heated and ventilated seats for both the front occupants, driver and passenger, which is really nice. I have my drive mode. So like I said, I can select between one of three drive modes of normal, eco and sport. Heated steering wheel, which is a very, very nice and pleasant option. And then I have my auto holding brake along with a dead switch, which is a little sad to see in a limited, but that's okay. Then I do get a center console with absolutely nothing in it. And then we gotta talk about the seats. The seats are fine. They are leather wrapped. Like I said, they're heated and ventilated and the driver's seat is power. However, the passenger seat is manual. Again, for $44,000, I would have liked to have seen at least a power passenger seat, but that's just my two cents. Speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2022 Hyundai Kona Electric and space back here is not very good. Now that is pretty typical for the Kona. Like I said earlier, I have driven a regular gasoline powered Kona. So the back seats are the same as what you would find in that. However, again, at this price point of $44,000, this thing is small. It is pretty small. I do get a center console, it appears. I get two cup holders in there. And I do have a USB-A charger down by my right knee. Now, of course, this seat could be moved up a little bit further, but not a whole lot, because this is my driving position. So I could be nice and move up a little, but if I'm gonna drive comfortably, this is where the seat's gonna be. So you see where the issues start. Speaking of space, however, let's hop in the very back. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we're on the back of the Kona Electric, just a little button down here. It is not a power tailgate. However, it is very easy to open. Once you are back here, nothing really crazy that jumps out at you. You do get a nice little LED light. I'm not seeing a 12 volt outlet, something I definitely like to see in more hatchbacks, but I can lift this up. You get some nice storage down here. Again, it is this thick foam. 
So if you have stuff rattling around, it will be a little bit less noisy, but you can go another layer deeper like Inception, and this is actually where your roadside assistance and charger will be held. So pretty decent storage space down below. I'm not loving the back space. Again, for a car at this price, it's a little smaller, but the Kona itself is a smaller vehicle, so on par with vehicles in this size segment. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and I'm not a big, big fan. I love the red color. It's almost like a Garnet red that I really, really enjoy. And the back end looks good. The front end just looks kind of blank. Because it is an EV, it doesn't need the front grills that we're used to from the last 100 years of automotive design. It doesn't need that airflow, so it doesn't really have a front grill. However, that is where the charge port is found, so you will spend a little bit of time up there. Speaking of the exterior, one thing I did want to note is that this does have a backup beeper, which has been kind of awkward almost at times, especially late at night, leaving at one or two in the morning. It's not amazing. But now, with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think, having driven the Kona EV for the last week? Well, I have to be honest, at the very start of this, I wasn't super happy with it. I thought for the price tag, I didn't really get the features that I would like to see. The lack of power passenger seat and lack of dual zone climate, lack of wireless car play, cramped back seat. For me, $44,000 just didn't seem worth it. And so I was really struggling with this review unlike I have in the past. So I actually called up a mentor of mine and I said, hey, I'm really struggling with this review. What can I do? Please, please, please help me out. And my mentor arrived. Robbie, which, thank you, Robbie. He said something that has really, really stuck with me and will probably stick with me for future reviews. He said, try to look at it from both sides. There's obviously a reason that they made it. Researching and designing an automobile takes a lot of time, effort, and money. There's probably a reason that they did it. And that really resonated with me. And so I started digging deeper into this car. Why would they make something like this? And so looking at that price of $44,000, that still doesn't quite make sense to me. I think there's a lot of other quality cars, even in Hyundai's own lineup for 44,000 that I would rather take. However, the base of this car, is $33,000. Now you're gonna have less features, of course. But then I started thinking, what other Asian brand offers an EV at $33,000? Tesla Model 3s are supposed to be that much, but you'll never find one for that, even at MSRP. Mazda had the MX-30, but that sold terribly. And there's the Nissan Leaf, okay, but Toyota doesn't really have an electric competitor to this. Honda doesn't really have an electric competitor to this. And so the gears started turning and I started to realize why Hyundai built this car. They took a car that they've been making for almost 10 years, the Hyundai Kona, pulled its guts out and put in an electric drivetrain. It was an affordable way for them to bring another EV to market. The Hyundai Ioniq 5 is a superior product. Left, right, up, and down, that's a better car. But that star starts at 43,000. And as soon as you start optioning it out, that number's gonna rise. Well, this car, this is fully optioned out at 44. So sure, don't buy the Limited, get a lower trim level. You're gonna be getting yourself into a new EV for a lot less cost. And so what I previously thought was a weakness, the fact that this isn't a completely EV architecture, the fact that the motor is under the hood and they try to make it look like it's a four cylinder, but it's not, the fact that the battery pack isn't evenly distributed. It wasn't originally meant to be an EV. I thought that was a big failure, but it actually becomes one of this car's biggest strengths, helps keep costs down. So while this car is clunky and a little weird, and honestly, I can't imagine that Hyundai will keep this around for a lot longer. They'll probably introduce like an Ionic 3 or 2 or 4 or whatever to replace this car. It was an important stepping stone for Hyundai. They wanted another EV in their lineup, and so they used their resources to do so. And while I can't recommend buying this top trim, I would highly recommend looking into the lower trims to save some coin and yet still get an electric car. And so like I said, this car is actually only sold in select markets. Here is a map of where it is sold. And so if you live in one of those states, I would highly recommend just checking it out. 
give it a little try and go in with an open mind. I'm surely glad that I did. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Hyundai for loaning me the Kona EV for a week, as well as Drive Shop for making it happen, the Midwestern Automotive Media Association, and of course, Mr. Robbie DeGraff for the words of wisdom. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really like it. Take care, guys.